in this video and this is part uh, 21 of the coin market cap chart we're going to work on the scroll here so if i scroll this you can see here now we get this scrolling box here indicating our location if i scroll out you can see this works nicely if i scroll here and then we have here this scrolling restriction if i will scroll here as you can see here it will only get the other i other side and if we do the same here we will get here only from the very beginning and we can scroll all the way back there there we are absolutely phenomenal so let's start to look how to do this so let's start to look now at part 21 and what we're going to do now is continue on with our uh, scroll box here basically this zoom box that we can call it and what we're going to do now is to create the area that is visible so let's scroll down here or before you even do that you can see here this item here that i totally forgot in the previous video to cover and it's a very tiny issue so if we scroll down here let's look at where is the issue coming from it's basically from the layout so if I scroll down here we have the layout padding left so what i need to do is i need to deduct that from here because that's 10 pixels of left padding so i'm going to scroll down here all to the second chart and we can say here left and let's do it very simple say minus 10 pixels save ignore that refresh there we are so now this is nicely aligned and we could do it of course with a soft coded version uh basically by saying maybe this my chart let's say dot config dot um this is the options that layout dot padding dot left if we do that one we should have now exactly the same all right there we are and now what we're going to do is to create the box to create the box we need to have a background color which would highlight what we're seeing so let's do that one first to do this i'm going down here and create my function and i'm going to call this function the zoom box i don't know what it would be a proper name for it but it's going to be a zoom box with a minimum and maximum value this minimum and maximum value we have already prepared in advance in one of my previous videos so we can easily grab the function from that so we already did a lot of the heavy lifting so now it's just connecting them all together so what i'm going to do here scroll up and i'm going to look for the function that is creating the zoom which is this one here and you can see here the min and max so i'm going to scroll down here and then what we can do here is we can just say here zoom box min comma max because they are the same con uh, constant variables so basically i'm going to say now trigger this go down here and have here the zoom box so if i do here now console log we should be able to grab the variables from the first chart and then we're going to apply that later on on the second chart so i'm going to say here console log min refresh open up developer tab if i scroll we should see here now 553 553 is the min value all right and you can see here that they they are all changing so that works all beautifully so that works so what i'm going to do now is we're going to start to draw an item so there's a constant and I'm going to say here, uh, well, first of all, we need to do here a object destructuring. And again, if you want to understand it, please watch my other videos in the description box about understanding object destructuring. So then what I'm going to say here, ctx.chart area. And then in here, we're going to say, we're going to grab the top, the bottom, the left, the right, the width, the height and well we can do another comma and we're going to grab here the scales and specifically the x scale but i just put in the y scale as well but we probably will only need the x scale because we probably need to convert a certain variable into a pixel so and then when i do that i say equal and here we don't say chart now we say yeah, my chart number two and the reason why my, my chart number two which is the chart object so once we have this, and I go, I leave this enter space here. So uh, we have here the my chart number two because we're focused on this chart object here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put in here, or we're going to draw our item. And as I was saying here, I'm putting here some space 
because later on we need to do just something. So what we're going to do here now is let's draw what exactly are we going to draw. You can see here if you look at the coin market cap chart, there is like this area, and as long as this is shown fully, then here we will also be shown fully, or at least the selected area, the visible area will be highlighted in a certain color. So that's what I'm going to do here now. So I'm going to say here, first of all, ctx.save to save all the variables we have above. And then what I want to do here now is going to say here ctx.begin path to draw our new shape. And this shape it must be disconnected from anything else. It's a new shape. That's why you have the begin path. So then what I'm going to say here is I'm going to use a background color here. If you look at the uh, coin market cap, it's maybe grayish, bluish. So I'm going to use my basic bluish color. So what I'm going to say here, ctx.fill, style, the double L, of course. And here, the bluish color. So let's search for the bluish color here. I guess we could just grab that from this. This is the blue color. Copy that. But what I will make sure is that this blue color is a slightly lighter, 0.1. So then what I want to do here is I want to start to draw the item. So I'm going to say ctx.fill rectangle to draw the rectangle shape. And what I want to do here is first of all, I need here the x value. I need the y value. And after that, I need the width and I need the height. So this one is, of course, quite tricky. Why? Because we will have to calculate a few items. Luckily, we can do it quite easily because what we can do here is we can grab here these values and this is the reason why we need this x scale here so what I'm going to say here is I'm going to say here x dot get and then here pixel for value and the value equals what exactly the min value and here I will do exactly the same for the max of 40 not for the height, but for the width. But the width is slightly tricky because what we need to do is we need to deduct the uh, what is that? The max value minus the min value. So I'm going to say here that and I say max minus x gets pixel value min. So that will calculate the starting from here to there. So once we have this, I want to say here the top position of the y can be just here the chart area top. And then the uh, height here, or the height, is basically the height here. I'm going to grab that, put that in there. So if I do this, and then I'm going to semicolon enter, it was a CTX dot. Uh, well, basically we're already drawing it, because the fill rec will already draw it. And then we can say here, very simple CTX dot uh, close path. So disconnect anything else, if ever there would be something. Refresh. All right, so nothing happens yet, but if I zoom in here like that, look what happens. We get this weird effect. Of course, this is very undesirable. And as we zoom, uh, as we keep on zooming in or zooming out, it becomes more intense. But that's all right. And this is the reason why I had the space here, because what I want to do here is using the my chart number two dot update. And then here, of course, remember we're going to do the non, so we won't see any effect here and any reloading of it, but it will update it completely and then refresh. Look at that, there you are. And if you look very carefully, you already see it here. And let me just uh, make this far more clear by making it slightly dark. Refresh. There we are, absolutely phenomenal. So we have the first part here. What we're still missing is of course the uh, circles here. And you might notice that if I hover over some of these items here, it still uh, triggers something. And then I have to figure out how we can disable that triggering of it. But anyway, that's maybe a, a video for later, but what we want to figure, figure out now is getting these circles here. So we have these so-called drag buttons, or what you can say, the swiper button, because with, with those, we can swipe to the left and right as well, and that still needs to be done, of course. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just put in here, enter, enter, and then I'm going to say here the following. I'm going to create here these swiper buttons. So I'm going to say here, let's start to make another one. So as I begin, path just to create a button then ctx dot stroke style and for the stroke style equals um, we can make this uh, we can make it the solid blue color I guess 
or else if you want to you can always give it any other color you want black or something doesn't matter I'm going to make this one and this one I will put it back to 0 0.1 and then what I'm going to do here is uh, we're going to say here the ctx dot fill style and I'm going to just give it a white color the reason why because else the transparency within the circle will be noticeable and then if you scroll that it will be very hard to spot or well it's it's harder to spot them so what I want to do next is once we have this we're going to say here ctx.art because I need to create well you can create that exact same button is it necessary it depends on yourself we can make it if there's real demand for it you can put it in the comment section below if you want to have exactly the same button I'm going to make it easy by just making a circular button and that's I think quite acceptable as well so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the arc functionality here and the arc functionality starts with the starting x starting y and then we have the radius I guess you already know this already we have covered this uh, well I'm not sure if we covered it in here I guess not sorry so the radius and then what we have here is besides the radius and uh, what we have more we have the radius that and then we have the starting angle start angle and angle and then finally counterclockwise counterclockwise I'll say here it's already on false by default so let's go and focus on these others so for this this one is quite easy because it will depend on the minimum value here so I'm going to grab this and put that in there put that in there and I hear the Y this is basically the center so if the minimum value here or there or well later on we have one here and one on the other side so what I want to do here is to make the circle but position exactly in the center here so what I'm going to do here the center that will be the height divided by 2 so what I'm going to say here is on the y we'll say height divided by 2 then the radius for now the radius could be I guess here a 10 pixel would be more than enough then we have the starting angle since we're going to create a full circle we need a 360 degree or you can do a math.pi but I like to use uh, an angle it's easier unless uh, there's some uh, complicated calculations so we're going to say a constant angle equals math.pi divided by 180 degrees and the reason I'm doing that is 1 pi equals a half circle which is equal to 180 degrees so a full circle is 2 pi that's 360 degrees so basically what I'm doing now is just getting the angle in degree of uh, one one angle only so what I'm going to do here start angle will be angle multiplied by zero as a starting point which of course is zero so maybe I could just put in zero here doesn't matter and then in another one we will say angle multiplied by 360 for a full circle so now we have this semicolon here we have to draw the item so it's a ctx dot fill and of course ctx dot um, stroke for the border lines and then finally ctx dot close path and then we're going to say here ctx dot restore to undo whatever we have here and maybe we could even do that there up as well I really notice that we need to do that one put it there make sure you have parentheses here save this refresh all right now if I move there there you are as you can see here and I guess maybe we need to darken it it's quite hard to spot uh, so I'm going to say here just 5 0 0.5 let's do that again all right so that is fine and you can see here that's very absolutely phenomenal this is really exciting but we're not done yet let's do the other one now uh, let's look so I'm going to create a function here and I'm going to call these either basically these are like swiper buttons or something like that so I'm going to say here swiper button and the swiper button has a value which I would call the position and the position is basically this min and max value so I'm going to cut out this put it in there and the reason I'm doing that is so we can later on only make one button we don't have to recode this all again and this will be all like this so we're going to say there I'm going to cut out this I'll say here position and then all I'm going to do now is I'm going to say here swiper button 
equals this position here and another swiper button equals this but then the max value save refresh now scroll look at that and you can see here and this is absolutely phenomenal like you can see here let's see if it all works correctly i know that there is sometimes a bug if you if you see, uh, uh, scroll here somewhere or somehow now it works perfectly interesting and if it doesn't we need to probably put a lock on there and anyway it doesn't matter the only thing what i do need to do eventually is to figure out how we can avoid the so-called resetting of it so we have this here um what i'm going to do now is if i zoom out all right you can see here the zoom out gives this error here and it shows here the non value the non value so i want to see here why this min value doesn't show up so let's do here a console log for the min value save we've this and then scroll out and then what happened we get an undefined value on 544 which in this case are line here that is correct so to solve this i'm going to create what we call a if statement but i want to do it before this part already and the reason why is because here those both are will be probably impacted so i'm going to create here a very simple if statement that will filter out if a condition is uh set on undefined so we're going to say if min value is equal to undefined in that case what i'm going to say min equals you say zero but in reality it's not really zero it's date index zero that's the one we need so once we have this i want to save that i want to refresh here we are zoom out absolutely nice so this is really really beautiful and we have this nice and we can of course put in here oh as you can see here that we really have solved that one but we can put in here even uh proper uh, characters or maybe a uh, arrow or something like that a chevron arrow that we need to add up what i want to do here is i've, I've noticed that here just look at the border lines it's too narrow so i want to solve that one so i'm going to say here um CTX dot stroke on a line width. Let's say this three pixels will be fine. Save, refresh. Now, there we are. And maybe three pixels is quite big. Uh, what happened? I just jumped up. So I'm going to put it on two pixels. And I think that should be more than sufficient. There we are. Absolutely wonderful. So now we have. What we call our selected item if i scroll there and let's see if we scroll if we do any kind of weird scrolling that we get maybe a bug or something no as you can see here it truly works and what is really nice is let's say i want to scroll here and remember we had this scrolling function there look at this absolutely and this is so nice all right so that is basically now we are really getting very close to completion we still have some work to do probably the scale needs to have a proper presentation like these here as well it's just not good enough we have to fix this part here and i want to make sure that we can scroll this by by clicking on it or the dragging of it uh, so there's still, there's still a lot of work to do